Good morning, I'm David Leonard, president of the Boston Public Library. Welcome to your library, and welcome to the official opening ceremony for the library's rare books and manuscripts department, just one part of our overall special collections department. <laughs> Uh, this is a slightly more intimate opening than we might normally have, um, and please feel free if you choose to keep a mask on or to keep a little distance if you, uh, if you so choose. Um, this project has been seven years in the making, and my job today is to offer a few remarks as well as be your, your master of ceremonies for today. The program should run about 20 to 30 minutes, um, but I would like to first of all invite our very special keynote speaker to um, speak first. This is her second library ribbon cutting of her tenure. Uh, please welcome our champion of learning, history, equitable inclusion and access, and someone who believes in getting the small things right in order to bring about real systemic change. This transformative project is itself the sum of an enormous number of small actions. I'm told she is herself a lover of classics and even won an award for Greek and Roman studies in high school. Uh, you, of course, know her as the president of the National Junior Classic League, but more importantly, <laughs> Mayor of the City of Boston, please welcome Mayor Michelle Wu. Good morning. Uh, I'm so excited to see everyone here I always uh, get a little anxious when people apply the term keynote because it suggests that you'll either be wildly insightful or very long, and I hope to be neither <laughs> one of those. Um, I'm just here to say thank you. This is such a treat that in my first 10 months on this job, thanks to the great work and diligence and foresight and vision of so many who came before me, I've already had the chance to do two major ribbon cuttings in our library system and to celebrate all that that means for the continued access and welcoming, oops, <laughs> at least I will be heard, <laughs> access and welcoming that uh, generations to come will be able to appreciate. I grew up in libraries. I. David touched a little bit, lifted a little bit of the veil on my um, nerd, nerdness <laughs> and, and where it comes from, but um, I am like a kid in a candy shop getting to tour the, the um, archives and, and see all of the treats that this incredible institution has carefully accumulated, cared for, maintained, and made available for decades in, in the city. And so, um, I do want to just, I know they're here and we have a speaking program that can't accommodate all of the incredible leaders who are part of our library system. So you will hear from, from some of them and I know um, our chair will likely recognize everyone, but I do want to thank especially our board of trustees who have uh, been stalwart champions for that balance of preservation, access, and making sure this is truly a system that sets national standards while also is deeply rooted in each of our neighborhoods and communities. So thank you to, um, this is in alphabetical order, <laughs> um, Zamawa Arenas, Joe Berman, Cheryl Cronin, of course, Madam Chair, Priscilla Douglas, who you'll hear from shortly, uh, Linda Darcina Fori, Jeff Hawkins, Jose Masso, Senator Mike Rush, former Representative Byron Rushing, Representative China Tyler, Christian Westra, uh, um, for your role in being part of this institution over time in the many ways that you continue to steer access and enjoyment, delight in our city. Um, I want to thank members of our operations cabinet, and you'll hear from our chief shortly as well, but this is a team that has worked for seven years on this project as well, so Carrie and your team. Um, Beth Prindle, who gave us the very special tour and, and um, is, it sounds like her baby here today. Um, the architects, Ellen and Lara, contract Charlie, our contractor, um, and of course, Allison, Eamon, Mary, and Rob, uh, who represent all the different facets of the work that we see culminating here today. Um, I will 
you know, we, we all celebrate Boston's many, many firsts. We revel in our sense of history and the buildings and monuments and landmarks that we can point to and that we're proud to share with the whole world that point to our cultural and democratic heritage here. The, I think what's special about the Boston Public Library is that that sense of history can often come with a feeling that it's to be kept up far away on a pedestal where no one can touch it or, or get close to it and it's something that we just kind of vaguely know about. History is made real and alive and tangible here in Boston. And that is the goal that I know, uh, the vision that so many share here today, that our young people growing up in this city today feel that this is their space. They own and are a part of and come from the incredible history-making, revolutionary ideas that live in the pages of these special collections and that the leadership and um, imagination of those who have come before pass down to us, that it's not just something we can look at from far away, but that we are part of and we are connected to. And so you see that reflected in every part of this new renovation that we can see directly into where the books are kept, where they are conserved, where they're taken care of and uh, repaired and restored. That sense of connection um, really is, is not only going to inspire generations to be connected maybe like myself and study the classics and, and feel a sense of um, power and wisdom coming from what we can gather from hundreds of years ago, but it will inspire new careers too, to know that this is a, a pathway and an area of career advancement and professional development. We hope to grow that within the jobs that we're creating here in this institution and in the mentorship and opportunities available to our young people as well. Um, when Oliver Wendell Holmes opened the McKim Building more than 125 years ago, he said, this palace is the people's own. That is truly the ethos that we want to create uh, throughout the entire city. All of our resources and opportunities belong to our residents. And this library and all of our branches really embody, and embody that philosophy. We have a new lobby, reading room, conservation lab, seven miles of newly renovated shelving, and a revamped system that makes it simple for members of the public to book appointments to see and experience the treasures here. I am so proud of all the work that our BPS leadership and staff and city operations team and partners have put in. Um, again, thank you especially to Chief Irish and the Public Facilities Department and the Boston Public Library's major projects office, led by Allison Ford and Eamon Shelton, um, who we have now persuaded to, <laughs> to jump over as our new commissioner of property management. Um, of course, we would not be here without the vision and work of Beth Prindle, BPL's head of special collections, and Laura Armshur, who served as the former chief of collections here. Um, congratulations to everyone. This is an institution that will re remain particularly special to our administration. Um, I, am, I take great delight and joy that I was sworn in on a Bible from the special collections here that is uh, hugely significant to our country. And I am most of all relieved, one of my proudest accomplishments in this administration is that I did not break or ruin it with the kids holding onto it <laughs> during the swearing in. Um, and so I'm so thankful to you all again for taking the risk to make history tangible, touchable, real for all of our residents and to make sure that we see ourselves reflected in every bit of this incredible institution. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Mayor. This project represents and is a major investment in the library on behalf of the entire city and includes over $16 million in capital investment from the city of Boston. It is over 31,000 square feet of renovated space. We are a branch within the central library, equivalent to our largest branch in size and in cost of renovation. And now over a quarter of a million approximately a quarter of a million rare books, over a million manuscripts spanning many centuries stand ready to be pressed into service, animating history and supporting learning. 
Of course, in addition to the library being a city department, we have our governing board of trustees, many of whom are here this morning. And so I would now like to welcome to the microphone our next speaker, the chair of the board of trustees, Priscilla Douglas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. We're so delighted that you're here because you embody everything that this library is. And today, in this historic moment, we're grateful to you and to all of our city partners, and I see them over there, for your continued support and investment in the Boston Public Library. Capital investments like this, they don't just happen. We brought that we're brought together today, and it means that we can continue to fulfill and ensure that your vision, our vision, to be more accessible, equitable, and welcome in Boston is part of that vision. As chair of the board of trustees, and I want them to wave, put your hand up because people don't know. <laughs> I speak on behalf of all of us. We're honored to support and share your worthy mission. The BPL is a precious part of the key and is key to the fabric of the city, and we look forward to the many hundreds of years this institution will play serving the residents of Boston and beyond. I also want to recognize the people who have been laser focused since 2015 on making the BPL Special Collection more accessible to the public. And Wave, where are you guys? There they are. <laughs> After all, we hold these treasures not for ourselves. We care for them so that the public can have access to them. The BPL staff, the Special Collections Committee, headed by Beth Prindle and many others, along with the project management team, even though you stole Eamon from us, and all the staff who supported the renovation for the past seven years are the real heroes of this story. So thank you, thank you. And Mayor, your focus on delivering on the promise of excellence for our patrons is unparalleled. And I know that every citizen of Boston will benefit from your commitment and your leadership. As the trustees of the BPL, part of the job is to act as agents of the public trust governing the library. So when I look at this beautiful place, I think about our predecessors. And I can only imagine that they're jumping for joy today <laughs> at this beautiful renovation. The trustees of the BPL were incorporated in 1878, and serving on this board is not only critical to keeping the institution moving forward, but with the service also comes the opportunity to be part of history. And all of you here today are part of that history. So as we stand here today, I can't help but imagine what the future is going to bring in terms of access and visibility. This place is warm, it's welcoming, it's open. And I know that one of the roles of the trustees, we have a reconstituted special collections committee and we have a reconstituted community engagement committee. And our job is to act as ambassadors. And today I can deputize all of you to go from here and spread the word about the rare books and this fabulous resource that it is to the uh, community. We, the trustees, will continue to serve as thoughtful stewards of your investment and ambassadors of your eff efforts now and into the future. Thank you very much. And thank you, Chair Douglas, and all trustees, uh, former and current. 
Um, as you have heard from our theme today, it of course takes a village. Once again, this project and supporting cast involves collaboration between the library, the city of Boston, and indeed private philanthropy, just as it did in the 1840s when the idea, this crazy concept of a free public library was getting started. Additional financial support today is provided and expressed through both of our great partners at the Boston Public Library Fund and the associates of the Boston Public Library, supporting both research and special collections in particular. We thank you and your supporters for their generosity and unwavering belief in the vision of the Boston Public Library as it maintains a balance and integration among all aspects of its mission. Thank you to those of you who are assembled here and part of that extended family. The other essential leg of the stool, if you will, um, is our many city colleagues, uh, without whose leadership, project management, construction management, budget management expertise, none of this would be possible. Please now welcome to the microphone the city's chief of operations, Dion Irish. Thanks, David. I don't know if it's, if it's me. I'm warming right now. <laughs> But this is very, a very special moment for me. Um, my first tour of a facility as Chief of Operations was this facility when it was under construction. So you know, I'm really proud to be affiliated with and be able to work with our public facilities department that works so hard with Boston Public Libraries and other agencies to bring forth um, you know, projects like this. That, uh, and it's really special to, to know that uh, a special collection, which normally, as the mayor said, seems untouchable to the average person, will be available and accessible to all. So I'll go with my prepared remarks. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Mayor. We're proud to serve as your chief of operations. And thank you for your investment and commitment to um, preservation and safekeeping of these treasured books and the history. Thank you, David, for your excellent leadership of our entire library system. We, I appreciate working along with you, and I also appreciate working along with the Board of Trustees and the great work that you all do. Um, the Public Facilities Team, led by Kerry Griffin. Give her a round of applause, please. <laughs> so, uh, Kerry leads our efforts on, on so many projects, from schools to libraries, and we can go on and on. I want to thank the team. They did an amazing job of planning and executing the design and construction of this beautiful space. Every aspect of the design is intentional, from the lighting to the humidity control, from security to the fire suppression. All of the systems that you can see and what you can't see significantly, significantly impact the quality, protection, and comfort of the space and the world-class connection that it holds. Thank you to the PFD team for your care and stewardship of this project. I also want to recognize um, former Assistant Director Mary Silvera, who worked so hard on this project. Thank you for coming back to join us. And another former Assistant Director, Rob Melvin, who worked on this project as well. You know, speaking of, of poaching, um, you know, we took Eamon, but the B Boston Police Department took Rob from us. <laughs> but he wanted to be here today, so thank you. So I um, also want to just recognize um, Evan Brinkman, our AD at PFD, and Alistair Lux, and our clerk of the works, Natalie Harrison. She was the eyes and ears every day on this project. Uh, thank you also to the project architect, Feingold and Alexander, and to the contractor, Building and Bridges. I think that is it for me. I also want to, you know, want to recognize our chief of um, human services, Chief Masso. And although not here today with us, <laughs> thank you. Uh, not here with us, and this, our chief of um, our chief financial officer, because we can't do any of this without support from our, our finance team, Ashley Grafenberger and our, our um, um, Jack Hanlon and Jim Williamson, our budget director. So th thank you all. <laughs> And now, as with all our projects, all our collections, all our spaces, all our programming, and all our services, it's the library staff who remain at the heart of everything we are and do, the animating engine that brings to life the essence of the public library. We are joined today by many of the staff who have been tirelessly working to prepare this new space and welcome back researchers, whether scholarly or casual, and all of our visitors. 
My special thanks go to those who helped shepherd and design the early stages of the project, including some who have moved on but have come back for this special occasion today. And now, on behalf of the staff, please welcome our final speaker before the ribbon cutting itself, a passionate leader and someone whose very first project at the Boston Public Library was incidentally our own John Adams collection here in Rare Books, the head of special collections, Beth Brindle. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for coming. I and many of my colleagues have witnessed some remarkable achievements and some extraordinary challenges um, during our respective tenures here at BPL. For me personally, today marks one of the most important transformational moments I've witnessed during my time here, and I would argue among the library's long history in the service of our collections, our staff, and most importantly, our users. We are standing in a transformed space. You look around you and it is a state-of-the-art testament to the major investment made to protect and steward our exceptional collections of millions of rare and culturally significant materials. Physically, although we stand in the exact same spot <laughs> occupied by the former Rare Books and Manuscripts Department, it is unrecognizable from a few years ago in every possible way. A show of hands, who saw the former space? <laughs> Please look around. <laughs> this is a beautiful space. It's purpose built to protect these collections and preserve them over time, over generations. For those of you who knew that former space, how far we've come in creating a world-class destination for researchers and for students and the simply curious to come and encounter our collections in an environment that is beautiful and accessible and findable and most of all welcoming. <laughs> Thank you so much to our city colleagues and the architects and contractors and all the staff members, current and former, who helped bring this physical renovation to completion. And while we are here celebrating the transformation of a physical space, I also want to share that I'm especially proud of the deeper transformation of special collections and our mission to connect the public with the extraordinary collections that we hold and trust for them. This represents both a new home and a new beginning for this department that has been reimagined and rebuilt for today's users from all backgrounds and interests. As a public library, that is our fundamental responsibility. And with the city's and philanthropic support, I'm so proud to introduce our incredible team of specialized staff members, including many who have joined us during the course of this renovation to, begin, to bring additional expertise and capacity. So for the past seven years, this group has worked tirelessly behind the scenes. When people wondered, what were you doing? <laughs> this is what we've been doing. And this new vision of special collections to life. This small team has risen from a series of crises to successfully face every possible challenge with creativity and teamwork and problem solving and passion, a lot of humor, and continued dogged optimism about what might be possible. We sometimes joke that we were launching a startup in a 170-year-old institution, and there's more than a grain of truth to that. We invented inventory processes and supervised massive moves of more than a quarter million books with the help of our incredible vendor Clancy moving in the span of months, not years. We cataloged, rehoused, launched new technologies, established new procedures and policies, and mapped out miles of collections um, while barcoding every single one. We created new roles dedicated to collection security, archives, and public service, and built capacity in conservation and curation across our team. Library colleagues from all across the institution kindly pitched in to help with scores of projects up to and including today's event. I particularly want to thank David for his leadership and advocacy and share a public very heartfelt thanks to all of our special, to, special collections department teams led by Jay Michella, Jessica Bightley, Eve Niger, Kristen Parker, and Meg Weeks. And they've already been acknowledged, but I'd like to give a special nod to former colleagues Laura and Eamon who join us today as well. 
Thank you all for your incredible contributions to these efforts and to all of our friends and supporters throughout this process. So now, we're ready to reopen our doors and welcome you and the public back. For those of you who have the time, we invite you to join our staff immediately following this on a brief 20-minute tour to take a peek behind the scenes and see for yourself some of these extraordinary transformed spaces and services. There were days that it seemed impossible at some points this moment would come. Friends, the day is here. So welcome and thank you. So I'll just finally ask the ribbon cutting team to assemble in front of the doors. It's slightly symbolic because you're all inside and uh, we're kind of open, uh, but we do want to do the, the ribbon cutting and then um, there will be tours for those who have the ability to stay. Um, thank you and once again, welcome to your library.